When a vigil to remember Sarah Everard ended in police wrestling women to the ground, the public response was one of outrage. The scenes were particularly unpleasant because of the relationship of the police to Sarah Everard's death. The man suspected of her murder is himself a Met officer. What's worse, the Met had been informed of allegations of sexual harassment by the suspect before Everard's murder, and it appears they had failed to act. Now, in response to the controversy, Priti Patel requested that Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary and Fire and Rescue Services, quite a mouthful, investigate the incident. And on Tuesday, they reported that the Met did nothing wrong. These were their conclusions. After reviewing hundreds of documents, body-worn video from police officers at the vigil and other media, and conducting interviews with the police, vigil organizers and politicians, the inspectorate found that police officers at the vigil did their best to peacefully disperse the crowd, police officers remained calm and professional when subjected to abuse, and police officers did not act inappropriately or in a heavy-handed manner. However, HMICFRS also found there was insufficient communication between police commanders about changing events on the ground. The inspectorate said that public confidence in the Metropolitan Police suffered as a result of the vigil, and that given the impact of images of women under arrest, which were widely disseminated on social media, a more conciliatory response after the event might have served the Met's interests better. So essentially they're saying the police did a great job, they could have handled it slightly better on social media afterwards because people ended up thinking they'd done a bad job. So saying the policing was excellent, all that wrestling of women to the ground, that was fine. But um, you, you should have been more proactive in terms of defending yourself um, on, on Twitter afterwards. Now, of course, the, the key part there, um, the big takeaway was, was the, the comment, police officers did not act inappropriately or in a heavy handed manner. Now, let's remind ourselves of the scenes we saw that night. They're young women getting dragged away um, by police when they're just, you know, standing very peacefully at a vigil next to flowers that have, have been laid to, to remember someone who was tragically murdered. There is a long, long history um, of the police um, and of state institutions who are supposed to do impartial investigations of the police, whether it's the inspectorate or the IOPC, previously known as the IPCC. Um, investigating the police, um, either through sort of regular reviews um, or through, um, you know, being the people who, being the institution that people go to with complaints about police conduct um, and finding that the police did nothing wrong um, and failing to hold the police account or failing to connect these outcomes of violence or of oppression to structural issues within and of the police. Um, every, you know, every prosecution of um, a death in police custody over the past 15 years has ended in acquittal um, and found that the police did nothing wrong. Um, we recently had um, Alice O'Keefe, who is one, I think she's part of the inspectorate um, or has some kind of role um, and was involved in the um, delivery of a report um, that was, you know, released this month. Um, on protests and on the policing of protests. And she said that in her experience of being within that institution, the police showed repeat, the inspectorate showed repeated bias in favor of the police and against peaceful protesters. And she said this really interesting thing where she said, um, quote, the purpose of the report was not to collect evidence and then make a decision, but rather to collect evidence to support the decision that had already been made. And that's all done within the context of the Home Secretary looking for, um, you know, trying to create the context in which she can more easily pass things like the policing bill um, and the, the policing crime bill. So what that tells us is that the outcomes of policing that we're seeing of, of dead people in cells, of black and brown people being stopped and searched and surveilled, um, of protesters being physically beaten, of, um, you know, people with mental health issues who come from working class or black or brown backgrounds being treated with, you know, carceral and, you know, punishment based, 
re responses rather than care, that this is not some, you know, heat of the moment response by police um, or some kind of deviation from protocol. But it is, according to the police themselves, or at least the bodies that are meant to investigate the police, themselves, it is protocol. Um, and it might not be protocol that's, you know, written down anywhere, but it's protocol that has emerged through repeatedly taking place and repeatedly being sanctioned. And, you know, obviously it goes without saying that this is not the first time that, you know, an investigation has been done into the police, particularly, you know, in the in, when it comes to, to police responses to protesters or political dissent. Um, the lines here, you know, the scenes of police throwing women, you know, women to the ground, it's much more clearer because it's, you know, to, to many people or perceived to be a much more shocking image than the police doing the same thing for, you know, black and brown teenagers. But that tactic of inflicting harm, as in the case of Sarah Everard, allegedly, using violence against protesters who are protesting the police, especially who are protesting the police, um, is a well-known textbook thing. Um, we saw it in, for example, Mark Duggan and how protests and attempts to organize in the wake of Mark Duggan's death um, was itself criminalized. So, or itself faced extreme responses from the police. So it's a well hashed technique. And I think we need to stop th thinking about this in terms of, oh, the, you know, the, the, the investigation has made a mistake here, but rather that as this keeps happening, it tells us something about the fact that the police genuinely do see this as part of our of its role and then see from that position, where do we go from there in our analysis of who the police serve and of what the police do? Mm, I mean, I think it's very convincing that idea that this report was written not to find out whether the police had done anything wrong, but rather to look at what evidence can we use to justify what they've done. So they, they decided the conclusion before they, they started and what they wanted to do was defend the police. Now, Something that's interesting, something that's often said, it's often true, is that attack is the best form of defense. And I think this report also um, drew upon that particular um, dictum um, because they did go on the attack against anyone who had a different opinion to them. They said the police did a great job and they're attacking anyone who disagreed at the time. So this is, is from that report. Um, they write, the inspectors write, the inspectorate write. The chorus of those condemning the Metropolitan Police and calling for the resignation of the commissioner within hours of the arrest, and presumably with a very limited understanding of what had happened, was unwarranted. Whereas a certain degree of uninformed commentary, particularly on social media, is inevitable, in this case some of the leading voices were those in positions of some responsibility. It is one thing, as in the case of the Home Secretary, to recognise that the scenes were worrying or upsetting, and to order an inspection such as this. It is another to jump to conclusions and in doing so undermine public confidence in policing based on very limited evidence. Now that's quite clearly a reference to Sadiq Khan who tweeted and made a public statement at the time that he wasn't impressed by the police's actions and their explanations to him had been unsatisfactory. Um, also probably a reference to Ed Davey, the Lib Dem leader. He called for Cressida Dick to resign. She's of course the, the Met Commissioner, the head of the Met. Um, now uh, this is super interesting because not only are we in a situation whereby you have uh, an organization which tends to just whitewash whatever the police do. So it's an organization the police can generally rely on to say what you've done is fine. They want to delegitimize anyone else who comes to a different conclusion. So even though we've all seen the videos of young women getting pushed over in an incredibly heavy handed way by the police and in a very insensitive way, given the reason of why people were protesting, they're saying to even have an opinion on that is itself um, something to be condemned. So saying politi politicians should not be able to make their minds up about police activity. It should be completely depoliticized. It should be put in the hands of a commission who, lo and behold, tend to say that everything the police did was actually right. Mm -hmm.